I'm here in Nevada, California, and uh, we just finished a week's worth of shooting, um, and on our way back to San Francisco, decided to visit somebody who has been very influential and helpful in my life in regards to photography and going to different places, and that's Bob Hitchman. And Bob, thank you for giving us a little bit of time this afternoon so that we can introduce you and what I believe is one of the most valuable assets for photographers today. Well, it's a, little, a real pleasure to have you here and uh, get to talk about my favorite subject. What we're talking about is the Photograph American Newsletter. Now, Bob's been doing this for 25 years. Now, I'm sure Bob's got a lot of stories to tell in regards to doing this, but this is a 12-pound resource book that you can use to find just about any place in America to photograph. There's just about. 100 and how many now? 130 locations. Printed four times a year? Uh, right now it's four times. The last 10 years has been four times a year, every three months. Well, while this actually seems pretty heavy, uh, Bob isn't one to uh, leave technology behind, and now everything that is in this is on this. And there's room for four more this size. With, with two gigs. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. So technically, you could go out in the field with this little thumb drive and just plug it into your computer and uh, call up uh, any location Absolutely. you want. Yeah, or do it before you leave and you don't have to haul that around. So let's talk a little bit about where, where you started from and then we're going to take a look at uh, some examples in here if that's okay. Yeah, well, my education was uh, in photography, Army education. Uh, I was a, f a motion picture photographer in the, in the Army, got sent to Germany, spent uh, three years over there doing uh, mostly film work, but I also ran a, a, a color lab on the post and uh, spent a lot of time in Bavaria, the Black Forest, doing uh, nature photography. Uh, I got started in nature photography back in high school when Super 8 film in cassettes mm -hmm. instead of reel-to-reel, -reel, uh, they, were, they were little cassettes and I was doing uh, nature films. This was back in the mid, middle 50s, and by the, the time I was through with the Army, I came home for a, got a, a nice job at Raytheon Electronics doing, uh, running their lab in, uh, in Mountain View, California. And it's just been photography ever since. So uh, as an artist, uh, you're never going to retire. Uh, you're going to just keep on doing not. this. No, this, this is uh, better than retirement. So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about where the uh, the origins of this idea came from. When did it when did it hit you that you could develop this newsletter? There was something that obviously some sort of process of bing you know one day you woke up and said wow I can do this. Well I was doing uh, uh, photo workshops and I was producing a lot of brochures and information mailings on uh, where to meet when to go what we were going to see. I was doing uh, about thirty five workshops a year. And I started out with early typewriters and memory typewriters, got into the uh, early Apple computer, and then the Mac SE uh, did that in 87, about 86, 87 when they came out. Uh, and it just evolved into using it a little more efficiently. I, I realized, I woke up one morning that uh, with the idea of uh, using my, my computer for uh, producing a, a newsletter to, uh, to tell people about the locations that I'd had found on, on my uh, workshop, with my workshop groups. We did a lot of hiking and traveling all over the country. Um, and I came up with the idea, I woke up at two in the morning, I said, Photograph America. <laughs> and the first one was on Death Valley. I had a, a good size, quite a few people on my uh, potential workshop uh, customer list. Sent them all the information on it and they, a lot of people signed up. And it's just grown ever since to a point now where there's about, well, there's about 8,300 subscribers. And uh, uh, it keeps growing every day. I get, get more, more subscribers. Um, and they're every state in the union and uh, a lot of international, hundreds of international people. So as a subscriber, what you can do, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, mm -hmm. but say I'm brand new and I want to uh, get this, you can subscribe or, or purchase the, the whole binder as is. Correct? One at a time or, or collection, regional or, collections. Or the, or the uh, disk drive, or uh, the, thumb the, drive. The thumb drive or CDs. I have CDs, but uh, there's some real advantages to a thumb drive. You can add future things to it. You can't add them to a CD. So once I get you know, the, the most up-to-date version, mm -hmm. then I do a subscription with you, and I get four additional 
uh, copies a year. Is that if correct? you uh, on my website, if you sign up for a, uh, a thumb drive, it comes with a one year subscription, so you get the next four issues, starting at the, the last one, the most recent one on there is your your first issue of your subscription, and then uh, I've had people who have renewed it year after year after year, uh, and uh, I just send them what I'm doing next. I don't really know what I'm going to do, but I've got a, a list of about fifty locations right now. That I haven't done yet. So you got another, another. You got a, it's you never got a few more years worth of work. To, to do uh, it. Yeah, and then when I when I finish that, I'm going to go back and reshoot the early ones that were in black and white. I'm going to reshoot them all in color. So that'll take another 25 years. Holy cow! So one of the other things you can do is if you don't want to subscribe or you haven't subscribed, and all of a sudden there's a place that you want to go, whether it be one of the national parks or the Florida Keys or Yosemite. You can buy individual mm -hmm. copies, both in hard copy and PDF, as, as an individual download or purchase. Exactly, yeah. The, the PDFs can be uh, downloaded instantly uh, online on my website. The, uh, the printed versions, and the last for the last uh, 15, 20 issues, they're all in color. Uh, I mail them out. Yeah, I get the so order. So if you're an international visitor, say from Australia or the European continent, and you're planning a vacation and you want to hit a few locations, then that's probably uh, a good way to, to get introduced. So no mm -hmm. matter which way you do, it looks like Bob's got a very flexible system. I know as, a, as an American photographer, there's no question that this sits on my shelf. Uh, actually has a bend in the shelf where it sits. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> my shelves do too. The, uh, the newsletter covers, uh, all the newsletters cover everything from Enzo Borrego Desert in the southern, southern California. Their Imperial Beach is right oh. down in the southwest corner. All the way up to uh, Cape Flattery and into Alaska, the uh, East Coast from uh, Key West all the way up to Nova Scotia, and each state, well, except for a few I haven't really done yet, uh, Mississippi, I don't have an issue on Mississippi, but I've got some issues here on the, the Louisiana coast and uh, some of the swamps down there. Love swamps, love caves, love the Southwest Desert. Some this some of my favorite places. Wow, as a photographer, you're like living the dream. Well, exactly. Above us, and uh, we you have a map of all the locations in in America that you visited. 130 dots there, and uh, 130 dots. The next one is going to be uh, uh, Prince Edward Island, north of, north of New Brunswick, okay. eastern Canada, <clears throat> and after that, uh, back roads of uh, Colorado is going to be a, an issue, and uh, more ghost towns. I'm, gonna do, I'm working on an issue on the ghost towns of California. I did one of uh, ghost towns of uh, Nevada. Nevada's, I think, uh, undervalued. There's some fabulous photography mm -hmm. in Nevada. And uh, my last issue, uh, two issues ago, was uh, Valley of Fire. Some fabulous formations there. Excellent. Let's take a look inside your book for a second. And I just want the readers to get an idea of how you have this set up. So as you open up the book, you get a catalog. And, and every edition has a, a, a thumbnail-type picture and a little description about 100 of, words. Uh, yeah. You know, of what, what you're going to be visiting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then as you get into it, you can go deeper in. And one of the things that I like about um, the way this is set up is I'm looking at uh, basically issue two right now, which is autumn in New England, which mm -hmm. is a, va a very favorite for anybody. And you give a little description about the, the history and so forth of what New England is. And then you actually, in this particular uh, edition, give how to plan the trip, a map which kind of shows you know, the route that mm -hmm. you took, and then kind of a day-by-day, day, you know, Sunday, m Monday, and as well as uh, all these magic locations. And now that I'm back in Stowe, here's Friday uh, in the end. And you also, in the very back, give uh, places to stay usually and best times of year to go and different things to think about when you're, you're photographing. Mm -hmm. It's a tremendous, tremendous asset to have. Um, Really nicely done. Well, you, and you don't have to haul the whole book around. With the, uh, the PDF files, you can download them on your, while you're on your trip. Uh, go, go to my website or, uh, uh, and order something or, or download it right there. Put it on your, your iPad. One of my favorite places to visit, and Chris and I were there just recently doing mm -hmm. a video, is Zion and Bryce. And, uh, of course, they kind of go hand in hand since they're so close together. Mm -hmm. And once again, uh, beautiful. You actually talk about the different seasons, which I think are really amazing for, for both those locations because they do change drastically based upon they do. the season. And now things have changed since I did this. The uh, uh, automobile traffic into the park, Arch uh, uh, Zion National Park, 
has been eliminated, eliminated from April to 1st of November. Yeah, 1st of November. So uh, after the 1st of November, you can, uh, well, the first week of November is always the best color. Autumn, there's a lot of autumn color there. And you can drive anywhere you want inside the park, uh, which is a real advantage. The, uh, the other thing about Zion and Bryce, if I had a week to spend in Zion and Bryce, I'd spend six days in Zion and one day in Bryce. Well, oh. yeah, once you do the overlook in Bryce, if you have good weather and... It's, it, they've got a laid out yeah. sunrise point. You, be, you, you have to be there at sunrise. That's the shot. And then 20 minutes later, the light's gone, and uh, yeah, that's, you, that's you, it. <laughs> and, and this one, I kind of got a, a laugh out of when I saw this. So this is you in your Volkswagen that's West the, Valia. Uh, in the 1982, I believe that is, uh, the, the, the West Valia. Put a lot of miles on those things, and uh, that's... Uh, this is how you did this. You, you got in your Volkswagen... Lived in it, yeah. ...bus and with your canoe, canoe <laughs> on the top, uh -huh. and you lived the dream that all of us want to live, and you <laughs> went out there, and I think what is really incredible here, and, and we were talking about this before we started the video, is that Bob has no secret locations. He's the kind of guy that'll tell you, drive to the three tree with the, the, with a rock in front of it and make a right hand turn down a dirt road and go a half a mile and off to your left you'll see a big bush and that is where you want to shoot it. A lot of photographers like to have their secret spots. Bob tells you where the secret spots are. And um, you're you're actually in the latest issues, you're doing GPS coordinates? Uh, you're I've, starting to? On and off, I've done it for quite a few years. I've had a, a, a GPS unit for forever. I've had some subscribers say, all they need are the numbers. That's it. Maybe a photograph, but uh, just a list of numbers. Not interested in doing that. So uh, something specific, like uh, the last issue was on the Valley of Fire in southern Nevada. You could stand there and look at this, this scene. You wouldn't have, have a clue uh, where, where to go to set up your tripod. Things are hidden. They're behind this other rock back there. You've got to have co coordinates to find them. Trails into canyons to leading to places that maybe... A little tricky to get to. Maybe a rattlesnake out there or something. <laughs> yeah, I have a little danger in your life, right? Yeah, well, I've seen maybe a half dozen rattlesnakes over 25 years in the desert. <clears throat> the most desert, the most, the most dangerous thing in the desert, Choya cactus. Really? I always carry a pocket comb, a metal pocket comb for your dog, because when you step on those things, the little buds fall off. They got little steel needles, barbed. Every one of them is barbed. You step, step on one. It pops up, sticks to your pants. You grab it, they're all in your oh. hand. You carry the pocket and you can pull it off. I've got a, a, a needle, pair of needle nose pliers, a very small one, keep in my camera bag with a pocket comb and it saved my life so many times. Now we have like two new tips in regards <clears throat> to what additional things need to go in our camera bag. Mm -hmm. Speaking of camera bags, you're, you're presently shooting with um, a DSLR system, correct? Yeah, the Nikon D three hundred. Yes. And you, you have a backpack, I presume. You haul all this around. And... Uh, yeah, I've got a couple of them. A, a backpack, and uh, for my flight tomorrow, I'm going to uh, use a little shoulder bag, pack a little lighter. <laughs> That's the story of all of our lives these We're days. We the big ones. Is how are we going to pack lighter for our our trips? Actually, it's kind of interesting because you know you've been able to take this thing and pack it lighter. Into exactly. This. Well, I, I've already put it on my laptop. I, I use a little Mac, 11-inch mm -hmm. uh, Mac Airbook, MacBook Air. MacBook Air. And uh, that's already on it. Yeah, yeah that's, well, that's light enough you can take right into the field with you and exactly. you know, your packs and so uh -huh. forth. So are there any really fun stories that, uh, of things that you've run into in 25 years of, of being out there? Well, uh, I fun stories. The Right now I'm running out of desert locations. I think I've done... All the best ones. My favorite is in uh, South Central Utah, Capitol Reef. Most people never go to Capitol Reef. Really? It's, a, it's 11 miles wide, 100 miles long, and uh, there's one paved road in it. Everything else is dirt, and some of the places are real adventures, like uh, Cathedral Valley, the northeast side. It's an all-day trip. You've got a four- All-day trip, driving or walking? Driving, you're okay. driving. Uh, you've got to have a four-wheel drive with some ground clearance. And uh, you start out by getting off the pavement and driving through a river, fording the river, the Fremont River. And it doesn't look, look like it, it's possible. You can't tell how deep it is. But you have to try it, get out there. You may want to walk out a few sure. feet, take off your boots and check it out. 
Uh, it's a loop trail. Uh, you loop from uh, this ford, and you come out uh, closer to Hanksville, about 10 miles away. But it, it goes up toward I-70, toward uh, central Utah, and uh, there's some fantastic stuff to photograph. But if you go the wrong way around and end your trip with the ford, the water level after a rain may be too high, and you can't get out, and you've got to go back all the way mm -hmm. around. So uh, there are some incredible towers out there. Uh, you can see them from a distance. Sometimes you've got to do some real cross-country to, to find them. The uh, Tower of the Moon, the Tower of the Sun, mm -hmm. they're, uh, they just rise up out of the flat desert, oh, amazing. 100 feet tall. Uh, there's some other towers. There's white fluted sandstone towers though in uh, Wauweep Wash near Page, not far from Glen Canyon Dam. 40 feet tall with a large black boulder the size of a Volkswagen sitting on top. And they're scattered so all around. So look at all these secret locations that you're, you're hearing about. More the reason to, to buy this, this subscription. Man. Uh, the, one of my favorite locations is uh, near Valley of Fire. And the, the formations are probably the same in the Darren Valley Fire, 14 miles east, across Lake Mead, the Overton Arm of mm -hmm. Lake Mead. You've got to drive all, up to, uh, all the way up to Arizona to double back to get to this place. Half of it's paved. The rest of it is uh, gravel road, graded gravel road. And the last is just driving down dry washes in sandy washes. Mm -hmm. I do supply GPS coordinates for that. The subject matter is a uh, mesa covered with statues of er eroded red sandstone that they all look like mythical creatures, animals, bizarre, uh, bright red formations, things you'd never imagine would be out there. Um, one looks just like a wolf howling at the moon. Mm. One looks like a flying elephant with a trunk, but with the, the wings <laughs> folded back. Just bizarre things. Um, the, it's on BLM land, it's, it's open to the public, but it is very easy to get lost going out there and, and, and coming back. If you've got a, an SUV with some ground clearance, follow the directions in the newsletter. In the newsletter. You'll find it. Yeah. Fabulous. Well, I want to first off, thank you very much. I mean, we could probably sit here for an hour and, and talk, like? and if we're going to sit here any longer, we're going to pop open a beer. But <laughs> I, I want to say thanks for doing this because I know it's pulled myself out of a bind number of times. I know I've sat so in the back it. seat with this and several other photographers going, well, Bob says we're supposed to go down here. And <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, been a, it's been very valuable, and we found some really, really good spots as a result of this. I think the whole photographic community owes you a, a big round of thanks for the efforts and your continuing efforts to put this publication together. Well, it's, it's a labor of love, and I'm going to continue doing it until I fall over. Well, hopefully you won't fall over too soon because it sounds like you still have 50 spots to go. I do, and since I'm in very good health, I plan on finishing all of them. Well, stay in good health and, and, and stay in touch with us. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, we'd, we'd love to maybe even bump into you somewhere along the line and see how you do all this. But that's the, the sit down with the man behind the book. Uh, we're actually now the man behind the thumb drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been uh, really quite a pleasure, and I appreciate you taking the time today to, I really to share it. some of this with us. And my hat is off to you, and thank you very much for what you've done for all of us for the last 25 years. Thank you, Kevin.